Tonight, gridlock at the Capitol as Minnesota's special session continues. Bipartisan bickering has discussions at a stalemate. And as police reform conversations continue around the country locally, some are saying they don't need school resource officers. And not even into the dog days of summer and already conversations about how to resume fall classes are underway. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Minnesota leaders are again calling on the legislature to pass police reform during the special session. Governor Tim Walz held a press conference today to discuss the ongoing gridlock during the special session. WCCO's Esme Murphy has more from St. Paul. The image of us and the Senate walking away from systemic change on Juneteenth um, adds to the legacy of what the rest of the world is looking at here. It is unacceptable. At a news conference, Governor Walls, top administration officials, and key DFL legislators belittled the GOP Senate package of reforms. When I saw the senator's bills, I was insulted. The Senate and House both have approved bills to ban chokeholds, a duty for officers to report abuse, and for officers to respect the sanctity of life. But the Senate bill has the Minnesota Post Board, which licenses police officers, drafting the language later. The House bill changes Minnesota law August 1st. Senator Gazelka indicated there might be room for compromise on the measure, but he was clearly angered with the governor's news conference. It frankly shocked me. Gazelka says it's the governor who is guilty of an action for failing to respond immediately to the looting after George Floyd's death. The lawlessness that was that happened as a result of not acting so far over a thousand buildings damage which really reflects people's lives over half a billion dollars of damage. Looming over both sides the possibility of not getting anything done something the attorney general whose working group put out proposals a year ago on police violence says he's seen before. Before George Floyd breathed his last breath. We were working a year before to try to prevent that tragedy from ever happening. And Senator Gazelka made it very clear the special session will end tomorrow night. Friday is the day. This Friday, tomorrow, by, by the end of the night, we're going to be done. As of now, it remains to be seen if a compromise will be made and legislation passed. The debate on the House floor regarding police reform is expected to go late into tonight. New tonight at 10, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar announced tonight she's withdrawing from the running to be vice president. She took her name off the list, saying this is the moment to put a woman of color on the Democratic ticket. Klobuchar went on to say choosing a woman of color for VP would be one way to lead the nation towards healing. Democratic nominee Joe Biden is said to be vetting a number of potential vice, candidate, uh, vice presidential candidates, including Senator Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams from Georgia. Let's check in on the weather with Caitlin. Caitlin, the rain finally <laughs> arrived after much anticipation. Yeah, we got a little bit of some thunder activity yeah. and a lot of it actually. It was pretty loud for mm -hmm. around 8.30 or so. It was really quick passing showers. Now that's headed up the North Shore, still with some lightning and that much needed rain, as you mentioned. Now you can see the Doppler and Sally, the bulk of this cold front is still sitting south of Duluth. That's heading into northern Wisconsin and more so western Wisconsin right now. And that's the main part of the storms that are more severe. Now the good news is here in the Twin Ports area, the SPC has downgraded us and we're just looking at some general thunderstorm activity and some much needed moderate rain showers as we did pick up quite a bit of probably about a half inch or so here in the Twin Ports with that passing shower. You'll see here the outlook is now a just a general thunderstorm outlook. The marginal risk has been lifted, which is good news going into the overnight hours. Friday's looking beautiful, so I'll have those details coming up next. Thanks, Caitlin. This week may have marked the start of summer for many students across the Northland, but districts are already starting to make plans for what school could look like in the fall. It's a tough task amid uncertainty during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Minnesota Department of Education released guidelines today on three possible options for students going back to school in person, uh, in, or going back to school, in-person classes, distance learning, or a combination of them both. CBS 3's Natalie Grant spoke with one area superintendent on next steps they can take to prepare. As students close their books on an unusual end to the school year, districts are opening theirs, making plans for the fall. 
Rick Aldrich, superintendent of Hibbing School, says guidance from the state helps. The information that came from the Department of Ed today just uh, makes it much deeper. The Department of Ed is asking districts to make contingency plans for each of the three options. That includes factors like cleaning protocols, mental health resources, social distancing, and equity among students. Now, while we're certain about how the pandemic will evolve over the next couple of months, the proactive planning that our school districts and charter schools are doing this summer will ensure our school communities are prepared for whatever it is. Alrich says it's a lot of work in a short amount of time, but he's confident that they'll be able to rise to the challenge. As we need to hit the ground running. We need to start making plans now. It's a big project to, to get done in a, in a month. Alrich says the Department of Education has been open to feedback during the planning process. He hopes that once the school year starts, the state will allow districts to have a say in what kind of learning best suits the community and how the pandemic is impacting people. What we're advocating for and hoping for is that we'd have the ability, based on, on hot spots with COVID in our area and what the situation is in our, in our county and our cities, that we'd have that ability to, to make some local decisions on what's best for our kids and, and the community. But the Minnesota Department of Education says they will have a final decision no later than the week of July 27th. Meanwhile, the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction is expected to release guidance about the school year on Monday. In an email to school administrators, Deputy State Superintendent Michael Thompson said they expect schools to reopen in the fall. The guidance will help school leaders plan for a safe, efficient, and equitable return to the classroom. Thompson says it's likely schools will need to provide for some distance learning during the year for students who can't come back to class. The state is expected to release its guidance on Monday, June 22nd. Tomorrow is Juneteenth. The holiday marks the end of slavery in the United States, and it's getting renewed focus this year as thousands march for racial equality. There is a march in Duluth tomorrow to commemorate Juneteenth, George Floyd, and the movement for equality. It has two starting locations, Bayfront Festival Park and the Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial. More details can be found on our Facebook page. In the wake of George Floyd's death at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer, the Minneapolis School Board voted to remove school resource officers from their buildings earlier this month. Now, students in Duluth are calling on their school board to do the same. CBS 3's Emma Quinn spoke with board members and petitioners to learn more. Current and former Duluth students are calling on the school board to make changes to the district's relationship with the city's police department. The main idea of the petition is that we want to have our school district cut all ties with the Duluth Police Department. Petition organizers say the $230,000 the school district pays the Duluth Police Department should go toward other resources they say students may benefit from. We would like to see the school district use that money instead for support for staff that can help all students, such as social workers or counselors trained specifically in de-escalation. While the petition has almost 500 signatures, school board members say more conversations need to be had. Every two years, the board reviews the school resource officer or SRO contracts. They'll be up for review again next month. And it's a good opportunity for um, stakeholders such as our administrative teams, our teachers, um, members of our community, and certainly members of the Duluth Police Department to come forward and sit with the school board. Petitioners say they want SROs removed from school buildings to eliminate racial disparities for students of color and lessen what they call the school to prison pipeline. School board members say they don't disagree those are issues, but school board chair Jill Lofeld says SROs aren't to blame. Do we have to work on equity and have to work to see a lens and to create an environment where all of our students and staff feel safe, of course. But I also know that there's many different connections, data, research about those issues. Petition organizers say if changes were to be made, there would be a more positive learning environment for everyone. There have been conversations between petition organizers and the school board, but they hope to have more official talks during the July 21st board meeting. Today, the Duluth Police Department referred all comments to the school board. Today, Vice President Mike Pence spoke to steel employees in Sterling Heights, Michigan. The vice president reiterated remarks he's made in previous speeches, saying the Trump administration will be ruling with law and order. 
He also said what happened to George Floyd in Minnesota was a tragedy and it shocked the conscience of every American, adding there's no excuse for what happened. The VP went on to say there's also no excuse for the rioting and looting and violence that ensued in cities across the country. We're listening. We're learning. The action the president took this week reflects that we're leading. But I'll make you all a promise. We're not going to defund the police. The vice president went on to say the centerpiece of the comeback in the United States is going to be law and order in every community, in every state, in the nation. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, how a small idea turned into millions of YouTube subscribers helping people do those quirky life things. There was a warm day across the North Lane, 81 degrees, sitting above average once again. Still tracking some showers and isolated thunderstorms through the overnight. They'll have those details coming up. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Slumberland's huge clearance event. Massive markdowns all over. Closeouts, floor samples, one-of-a-kind items. Plus, get totally free doorstep shipping. Hurry into our huge clearance event and save. Only at Slumberland Furniture. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly health care feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Essentia Health physical therapist Ron Winans tells us how the Spinex Rehabilitation Program is helping patients restore neck and back strength. We uh, incorporate some strength and conditioning, cardiovascular, stretching, home program and uh, a routine here and in the physical therapy department. We're here also to help decrease their fear, return to their activities recreationally, work, home, yard work, anything they need. We cater their program to themselves. So someone comes in with back and neck pain, it is a head to toe project. We do uh, initial evaluation, we find out where they're at, not where they should be at for height, weight, age, female or male. We find out where they're at. If you're six foot five, 350 pounds, that's who you need to be strong enough for. So we got to find out where you're at. 80% of sports injuries are training errors. So we have to find out what's their flexibility, range of motion, and then progress there. The Spinex program is two days a week for six to eight weeks. Winan says a successful outcome is when patients can increase their activity without fear. We're here to re-educate the back and neck increase their range of motion flexibility. Once we have that, then we can start building on the strengthening component. So it is, again, tailored to the individual, and obviously as they build confidence and decrease fear to their routine to activities, I wanna hear that they can do stuff they hadn't been able to do, and that's what we typically see. In the last 11 to 12 years, we've seen close to 2,500 patients with an 80% successful rate. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. This medical insight was brought to you by Essentia Health. To learn more about the services we offer, visit EssentiaHealth.org. Slumberland's huge mattress clearance event. Crazy markdowns on all kinds of mattresses, like a Sealy Queen mattress as low as $149. Plus, overstocks, closeouts, floor samples. Hurry to Slumberland's clearance mattress event. Don't miss out. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. The past couple of days have been quite a tease to summer as summer does actually begin on Saturday and temperatures will actually start to cool down after this weekend. We saw 81 degrees up on the hill today, 72 being that average and rain. We saw six one hundredth of an inch earlier this morning and then when that system rolled through about 8 20, 8.30 this, after, or this evening, we did probably pick up about a half inch to an inch in some spots. The reports haven't come out just yet for that, as we still got some rain kind of moving through much of the region. The bulk from this cold front is still sitting well down to our south, and that's going to remain that way as it's actually just shifting straight into Wisconsin and completely missing Duluth and north. Now, if I zoom in a little bit here on the Doppler and satellite, you'll notice some of these showers and thunderstorms that we saw roll through Duluth really quick did drop quite a bit of rain, and they're quickly now moving up into Silver Bay and headed into Grand Marais by the overnight hours. We'll still see some passing rain showers, which is great because that's much needed rain that much of our region really does need and will benefit from. The good news is going overnight, though, is the SPC has downgraded our marginal risk. I showed at the 5 and the 6 o'clock hour, we were in a darker shaded region with the, the light green on the outskirts of our region 
Right now, we're just in the general thunderstorm, so that's just an isolated thunderstorm in nature with the passing rain showers. So that is good news going into the overnight hour as that cold front continues to move across Wisconsin, bringing those rain showers, some of which could be stronger as they move through central Wisconsin now as that bulk kind of stays to our south. And then as we head into Friday... We've got a weak high pressure from the north that kind of inches its way in, helps clear up the skies for Friday afternoon, making for a pretty nice afternoon, 75 degrees. And then clouds will quickly increase into Saturday as we have our next system approaching the region for your Father's Day. So Saturday will begin dry, and then the sun, uh, rain does move in for Sunday on Father's Day. Time right now for you. By midnight tonight, this is the HRRR model. Now, sometimes this is normally the model I go to when we have severe weather threats because typically it does a good job with relating to what we see on the radar. Now, with this lately is we use a lot of airplane data from the HRRR, and with COVID in place, we haven't kind of quite got all of that data we typically have on our models. So sometimes these models kind of show discrepancies in place of the radar. So by 3 a.m., we're still seeing some light rain showers along the north and the south shore, but most of Minnesota is clearing up, and by Friday we'll see plenty of sunshine kind of throughout much of the region, Friday afternoon even as well, and then the next system kind of moves in by the evening, and we'll see clouds increase pretty quickly through Saturday afternoon. Tonight, scattered showers and thunderstorms are still a possibility as some could redevelop into the overnight hours, but like I mentioned, the severity has been downgraded, so that's the good news as you go to uh, bed tonight. We're not looking at too much on the severe side, but other than that, temperatures will rebound once again on Friday back to 75 degrees, average being 72. So we're sitting pretty well. Uh, I don't know. Lately, it seems that we've been much warmer than we typically see. La like last year, I thought it took a while to get so warm. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many 80s already that it's kind of like, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> yeah. but it's just weird because sum summer starts Saturday and then temperatures actually cool off quite a bit. We're used to cool temperatures up here. Especially but, you know, by the lake. Yeah. And in the meantime, <laughs> it's nice to get a little rain tonight. Yes. Get, turn things green and reduce that pollen out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Caitlin. You're welcome. As the 4th of July approaches, the Duluth Fire Department says they're already seeing an increase in calls about people setting off fireworks. They say that's concerning because it's much drier this year than in years past. A firework could spark flames very quickly. Things that wouldn't typically burn will this year. You're asked to have water nearby so you can quickly extinguish flames if they do start. As, as the 4th of July comes up, everyone wants to set off fireworks, and me too. Um, but we are in the middle of a drought. So in addition to the standard concerns about you know, personal injury and safety. We also want to be careful about not igniting any brush fires. In Minnesota, it is illegal to light off aerial fireworks even on the 4th of July. Father may know best, but when dad's not around, we've got the next best thing. And CBS's Jim Axelrod found him online. And you got to be careful with this. This is a needle nose pliers. A few months ago, Rob Kenny had an idea for a YouTube channel, Get started here. teaching some of the manly arts, like any good dad would. That side, right, and we go around the front. So I'm trying to make it a one-stop shop where you can come in a calm way, be empowered to learn how to do this stuff for yourself. As the son of a man who walked out on his children when Rob was just 14, Rob had to figure out so much for himself. So today, I'm going to show you how to use a stud finder. He couldn't be alone, he thought, and hoped for a few dozen subscribers. Wall. How many do you have right now? Uh, 2.2 million. That's not 30 or 40, right? <laughs> I know. Let it drain down. It's great to watch him unclog a toilet, but I think there's more to it than that. Start on one side and work my way around. Stephen Jacobs' real father never taught him to shave. Rob Kenny did. I think he's just a, a modern-day Mr. Rogers. What would you want to tell him? To thank you for filling in the hole that so many of us have in our souls. Okay. Warm, compassionate, and peppered with dad jokes. If you came here looking for help finding a boyfriend, that would be a different stud finder. This father of the internet is also a child of the lockdown. I'm going the wrong way here. His whole project was birthed by the pandemic. I think we're looking for an emotional connection uh, right now because of this dang quarantine. <gasps> Call it a Father's Day silver lining. Flip it over and, come and for millions, a bright, shiny one at that. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, the countdown is on for the Democratic National Convention coming up. The preps that are underway to host the event during a pandemic.
CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Fleet Farm has what dads want for Father's Day. Whether he's chilling by the fire or heating up the grill, Fleet Farm has great deals for dad. Get a $10 Fleet Farm gift card when you spend $50 or more on Yeti drinkware. And select Under Armour Apparel for the family, 25% off our low fleet price. Plus, Fleet Farm gift cards make the perfect gift for Father's Day. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Thank you for virtual family dinners and long-distance birthday wishes. Thank you for sweet streaming melodies and spontaneous dance parties. Thank you for keeping classrooms together and learning alive. Thank you to our incredible network of employees who make all these beautiful connections possible. Northwest Outlet Store is open. Yes, Northwest Outlet is open for business. Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, get up to 40% off of the North Face and Columbia's entire line of summer clothing. New colors, styles on capris, tees, shorts, rain, wind, and fleece jackets. And UPF sun-rated clothing. Big bargains on sandals, rubber boots, and trail shoes from Keene, Teba, Merrill, Chaco, Columbia, and the North Face. Northwest Outlet is open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And online 24-7 with curbside pickups during store hours. If you think about the last few months, maybe it'll give us a new perspective. Maybe we'll see things we've been missing. Maybe it'll help us see just how connected we all are. And maybe, just maybe, if we look at the big picture, it'll remind us just how amazing freedom really is. Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Bonjour and dinner, we mock it. Hello, all my relatives. I'm Dr. Arnie Vainio, and I live in Duluth, and I love Duluth and the surrounding communities. Keeping COVID-19 from spreading is going to depend on all of us. Washing our hands frequently, keeping social distance, staying home if you can, and wearing a face mask is important. We need to keep our elders and those most vulnerable safe. This is about respect. This is about love. Take your new Polaris from Duluth Lawn and Sports, the region's largest power sports dealer. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. It's 102.5. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. In Milwaukee, the countdown is on. Literally, there's a billboard that says 59 days until the Democratic National Convention. That's when Joe Biden will formally accept the Democratic presidential nomination. That's the latest Thursday from officials familiar with planning who say it'll probably happen August 20th. That's the last day of the convention. The event will be scaled back and there will be a major digital component to it this year. Prepping for the convention is a little different this year, of course, with coronavirus, but the chairman of the DNC says his team is following the guidance of public health officials, saying his team has the, quote, flexibility to do what is necessary. Coming up in sports, a Minnesota Wild Forward opens up about living with type 1 diabetes amidst the pandemic. Kelly's in next. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. The nursing program at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is really challenging, but it has to be. It's approved by the yeah, Board of Nursing. Yeah. And graduates here have been successfully passing the state board exam. They give you real-world experience with healthcare institutions across the community. I'm really glad I chose Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. I'm Dr. Carolyn Phelps, licensed psychologist. In the wake of this pandemic, many of us are feeling overchallenged and overwhelmed. If you or someone you care about is struggling with anxiety, depression, or any other mental health problem, please know this, getting help matters. Mental health care is essential care and it's still available. Simply contact a local mental health care provider yourself or ask someone you trust whom they'd recommend. Now more than ever, reach out for help. We dance for healing. We dance for one another, for connection 
connection ways like no other ways like no other together or even apart or even apart we are resilient we are resilient <laughs> The 2020 census is here, and we need to do our part for our people. We have a structure fire from injuries on Highway 13. Did you know your friends and neighbors volunteer to provide emergency services? They are serving many communities and need your help. Challenge yourself. Be part of the team. Be somebody. The 2020 Subaru Forester. The SUV for all you love. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 33 miles per gallon. Standard EyeSight driver assist technology. A spacious and comfortable interior. The best SUV for all you do. Get 0% APR financing on all new 2020 Subaru Forester models now through June 30th. Visit us online at MillerHill.com. Our Northland may not have the longest severe weather season, but it does come around every now and then. I'm hoping folks will keep an eye to the sky and on Channel 3 here this summer. If severe weather threatens Austin Haskins, Caitlin Moffat, and I will keep our eyes glued to the radar. We'll break in if you need to hear about the latest storm developments. We'll work together to keep our region safe. Watch Dave, Caitlin, and Austin for local weather you can trust on CBS3. I chose a career that isn't easy, it's dangerous, and it's hard. Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College has set me up with everything I need to succeed. Through challenging classes, longer defensive tactics training, and instructors who work in the industry, Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is setting me up for success. The COVID-19 pandemic has produced many obstacles for athletes at every single level of their sport. For Minnesota Wild Center, Luke Coonan, the pandemic presents a number of other obstacles as well. Coonan has often been outspoken in sharing his story having type 1 diabetes. The native of Chesterfield, Missouri, has lived with the condition since he was in sixth grade. Today on a press conference, he was asked about extra precautions he's needed to take in order to take extra care of his health during this time, especially as he prepares to hit the ice for the season return next month. They say it's a, it's a concern, and I think for me, I've always, you know, took it upon myself to really be on top of it and take care of myself and uh, really put myself in the best position to, you know, to play at my, uh, at my best and feel my best. Pretty much the same as everyone else, you know. Um, don't share anything, no towels, drinks. You know, wash your hands as much as possible and, uh, you know, really just do the, the right things and the, the things that they've been saying all along. Kunin also added that the team doctors and staff have been very helpful in keeping him safe during this time and all throughout his career. In some more hockey news, Northland College women's hockey coach Kelly Ryder stepped down earlier today. She started the Jills hockey program back in 2015 and saw her first recruiting class graduate this spring. The program showed steady improvement in her time at the helm. Via a press release, she will be pursuing other professional opportunities. We've seen not one, not two, but now we've got three. Three, three former UMD women's hockey players that have committed to play for the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. Riley Houston is the latest addition announced as a member of the PWHPA. The forward from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada spent three years with UMD. She transferred from the University of North Dakota after the program was dissolved following her freshman year and made quite the impact on UMD. 17 career goals and 32 assists. Houston was a major clutch player scoring when it counted most, especially this past season. Houston now becomes the third UMD senior to join the PWHPA, as well as the fourth senior to announce her post-grad hockey plans. Sydney Broad and Maddie Rooney will be PWHPA members as well, while co-captain Jalen Elms heads over to play in Sweden. And as runners gear up for their virtual races heading into what was supposed to be Grandma's Marathon this weekend, medical personnel will not be out on the course in case of emergency. Our own Neil Viersba met up with Tony Stenslin of Stenslin Coaching earlier this week to talk about the extra precautions runners should take heading into the weekend. 
Grandma's marathon runners are faced with an unusual task ahead as their race goes virtual. Tony Stenslin, a running coach, says this year's race will have a lot to do with the person's instinct. In your training, you're, you learn a lot about yourself and how you react to hotter weather or colder weather and how much you sweat. So hopefully some of your own instincts can kick in and you're, you can kind of take care of yourself along the way. With no medical personnel to help runners this year, Stenslin says participants should prepare accordingly to avoid problems. If you're doing a, the the half marathon or the marathon distance you're gonna probably want to carry some you know food or water with you with a heavy emphasis on hydration pouches uh, little waist belts with bottles a little handheld bottle works well but if you do happen to run into problems Stenslin has this one tip I think the number one thing right away is just to slow down walk if you need to and take and take your time so that you can get a chance to hopefully recover and regroup and then continue on with your race Bringing your cell phone and incorporating family members are some of the other suggestions Stensland had to ensure safety for runners. That's going to do for sports tonight. We'll be right back after the break. CBS3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health Virtual Video Visits, offering face-to-face -face interaction with your provider from the convenience of home or work. Your water softener needs salt. You buy it, lug it, pour it over and over. Save salt and the hassle with a Culligan High Efficiency Water Softener. The world's best. Click or call Culligan Water and start saving today. Shopping for a new kitchen at Skips has never been better. Take home your dream kitchen today with Skips Fruitwood Oak Cabinet in painted or dark shaker styles. You can rely on Skips for quality and durability at affordable prices. Stop by with your measurements and see how you can take home beautifully painted or stained cabinets today at a truly affordable price. Visit us online at skipshomecenter.com or stop in to see our showroom at 4728 Rice Lake Road, Duluth. This is a fun game. What are you doing? Hey, it's your sister. Maybe she wants to help daddy. Wow. Should I get mom? Ma mom doesn't need to know. Mom doesn't need to know. Hey, Ron. The new battery-powered 60-volt mower from Toro makes mowing simple, so you can enjoy more quality time with your family. Lawn looks good, though. At Denny's Lawn and Garden. Seeing the joy that people feel when they share a meal with family and friends, that's why we do this. The laughter of kids around the table, the thrill of families driving through for a treat, the delight of not having to cook, and instead, letting us safely serve you. It all comes back to taking care of each other. And for that, we'll be here with your favorites and always a smile. At Super One Foods, we're always looking for new talent to join our five-star service team. We are a growing family-owned company that provides opportunities to learn new skills and enhance your working knowledge while serving your friends and neighbors. From flexible scheduling and variety in jobs to competitive wages and exceptional benefits, Super One Foods offers an excellent environment to grow both personally and professionally and can provide you with the foundation for career advancement in the communities we serve. Come join our team, Super One Foods jobs right in your neighborhood. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom ring. Gone country. I ain't going down till the sun comes up. It's 102.5. Duke FM. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. The city of Superior is rewarding kids for being safe on their bikes this summer. Yeah, the new Sweet Streets program kicks off in Superior on Saturday. I keep thinking it's Friday today. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> the campaign rewards kids who are being safe and wearing helmets while riding their bikes. Superior police officers will give them a token that can be cashed in for an ice cream cone at Sweet and Sweets. Daniel Clarmer owns Sweet and Sweets, and he says he's proud to take part in the program. Again, the program kicks off on Saturday. That's also when you can pick up a free helmet from 1 to 3 at the Superior Public Library. I think you keep thinking it's Friday because you're anxiously awaiting that beautiful day that Caitlin's about yeah, to tell us about. Tomorrow is going to be really, really nice. Just in time for summer to begin on Saturday. We've got some passion showers kind of this evening, but other than that, 
Uh, Nothing on the severe side, some much needed rain, of course, that we did finally see here in the Twin Ports. We picked up about a half an inch down here in Canal Park. Not as much up on the hill, though, and uh, those reports will come out tomorrow. The areas up at the North Shore still seeing some of those thunderstorms that we saw around the 8.30 hour, and now we're just seeing some light rain showers. But Friday, mostly sunny skies, 75 degrees. First day of summer on Saturday, 72 degrees, so it's a nice start to the weekend. Yeah, good way to kick off a Friday. Yeah, looks All good. Right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.